Welcome to our final climate check of 2020, a year that's been turned on its head by the pandemic. And whilst so many aspects of life stood still, temperatures and extreme rainfall have both continued their steady rise. November was the warmest November globally on record by a clear margin. And according to the World Meteorological Organization, 2020 has been one of the top three warmest years on record. This chart shows the steady rise in temperature and we're now at 1.2 Celsius above pre-industrial times. And not only has it been another exceptionally hot year, but the past decade has been the hottest decade in human history. And Arctic sea ice, so crucial to the speed of climate change, has been at its second lowest extent on record for its summer minimum. In fact, the Siberian Arctic saw extreme heat, with temperatures five degrees above average for the first half of the year. A heat wave and resulting fires that, according to the climate monitoring website Carbon Brief, were made 600 times more likely due to human-induced climate change. And to North America, where a summer of sustained heat in the West drove the worst fire season on record in California. And what could be the hottest temperature ever reliably recorded on Earth, 54.4 Celsius at Death Valley. As the Southern Hemisphere moves into summer, temperature records are already being broken in Brazil, Paraguay and Argentina, whilst the highest temperature ever recorded in Antarctica, more than 20 degrees Celsius, occurred in February. And in Australia, the summer fire season is underway, with extreme heatwave conditions already affecting parts of Queensland and New South Wales. Bursts of heat are normal for this time of year, but what's made this exceptional is that some places have had temperatures 18 degrees above average. The global heat of 2020 is all the more remarkable because of the lack of an El Nino event, an oceanic warming of the tropical Pacific that's usually a big factor in hot years. This chart shows how temperatures have varied from average over the past 70 years. And not only has there been a gradual rise in those temperatures, but we can pinpoint the dark blue colours here. Now they show La Nina events, which often correspond to some of the lowest temperatures. The red colours here are El Nino events and they often coincide with some of the highest temperatures. Now this year we have seen a La Nina event developing, so that would usually lead to a cooler outlook. But scientists think that because of human influence, a La Nina year now is hotter than an El Nino year from the 1980s. As the world heats up, hotter air holds more moisture and rainfall events are becoming more extreme. The Atlantic hurricane season was record-breaking, 30 named storms in total. Take a look at the storm tracks visualised here. Climatologists aren't sure what role climate change plays in shaping hurricane seasons, but suggest that hurricanes may be intensifying more rapidly and producing heavier rain as they move inland. In September, Hurricane Sally produced 380 millimetres, that's 15 inches of rain, the deepest colours here showing the heaviest downpours, which led to an historic flooding event across parts of the Gulf Coast. And in Nicaragua, after a lack of hurricanes for the past four years, two struck in November. Ita followed closely by Iota, causing devastating floods across a swathe of Central America, affecting millions of people. In contrast to the Atlantic, let's spin around to the West Pacific now, where typhoon season has been quieter than normal, but not without some serious weather events in parts of Southeast Asia. Although monsoon rains and tropical cyclones are an annual occurrence, this year has seen the rainfall concentrated through central parts of Vietnam. And in the region, there have been some very powerful storms, including typhoons Molave, Goni, and Vamcor, which caused floods and landslides and the loss of hundreds of lives. The southwest monsoon brought above average rainfall to India, the first time since the 1950s, two years in a row have been wetter than normal. And in November, Cyclone Gatti became the first ever documented hurricane strength storm to hit Somalia, exacerbating the extreme flooding that's been affecting much of East Africa this year. In the UK, 2020 delivered not only the wettest month on record in February, but also the wettest day ever recorded. On the 3rd of October, an average of 31.7 millimetres of rain fell, and that's enough to fill Loch Ness in just one day. 
we also had the sunniest spring on record. In fact, there was more sunshine during spring than we see throughout most summers in the UK. 2020 will be scarred by COVID-19, but what impact has it had on our climate? The slowdown in industry and travel has led to a significant drop in fossil fuel emissions, but carbon dioxide stays in our atmosphere for several centuries and concentrations are still rising. In June, the Mauna Loa Observatory in Hawaii recorded the highest ever daily concentration of carbon dioxide in our atmosphere, 418 parts per million. Many hope that the pandemic could be a springboard for change with renewed focus on climate policy. That commitment will be tested as world leaders gather at the COP26 Climate Summit in Glasgow in November 2021.